This interview with the amazing director, Kelly Macon, was done for May Day Homestay Gay Play, the 20th anniversary Queers Folk cast and crew reunion, all to raise money for Centerlink, the hub of LGBTQ plus centers throughout the US and into Canada. If you like what you see, please consider donating at the link below. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy this interview. How are you, Kelly Macon? What's going on in your I'm world? Good. Me? I am, uh, I'm at home, like everybody, like the rest of the world. Were you in the midst of working on anything when this hit, or? I was. I was working with Tom Best on something. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Amazing. I've worked with him a fair amount uh, over the years, and, and of course, we're always talking about you guys. And but what show was that? It was called Nurses. It's, uh, mm. it's about nurses. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I it's think about that title. Nurses. No. <laughs> yeah, a little on the head. So, so, so you work with kids in the hall, of course. And what other kind of things were you doing before Queers Folk? I didn't do a lot. Um, I did kids in the hall, and then I did features. I did uh, two or three features, and then um, I started to do television. But I hadn't done many much long form television or much drama. I've basically been in. The comedy realm. That, that's drama for all you Americans. Yes. He, he says drama, that's, that's Canadian for drama. Just we'll so translate. Everybody knows. <laughs> so, uh, so Queer's Folk was kind of one of the first that I, I kind of sunk in. and Because I did a lot of those episodes. I, I looked at that. I think I've done like 11 episodes or something. Yes. Yeah. You, you ended up being, I think, the director who did the most of them. Mm -hmm. I think yes. when it was all said and done, because right. we fell so in love with you once you showed up, you were, it was, it was so great because you were creative and inventive and you really understood the, the vocabulary of the show, but you always tied it to emotional storytelling, which right. is, as you know, everything. Yes. You, can be, you, can, you can show off all you want, but if it doesn't have anything to do with the story you're telling, mm -hmm. you're, you're dead in the water. But you were also such a joy to work with. I mean, that was, I think, why we all fell so in love with you is it was just so fun. You made it, you made it easy. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a really interesting show. Uh, tonally, it was interesting. Uh, you know, it's very progressive, but at the same time, it was sort of old fashioned. Uh, you know, it had a lot of humor, but it also had a lot of drama. And, uh, <laughs> and it tackled some really interesting issues. And then what was great was, I mean, you guys were all fantastic. The cast was great. It was very, uh, a tight cast coming in, which I appreciated. I came in in the third year, which is, can be difficult after, you know, the characters are sad and, um, and, and people have kind of set into their mold, you know, about how they're, they're good and bad habits. Good yeah. and bad. But I was very impressed with you guys as a, as an ensemble because you were always really supportive of each other. And, and that made uh, a huge difference to uh, the crew and to myself working. And I think because of the nature of it, it was, you know, the, you guys were asked to do a lot of like all, you know, everything, you know, and, and certainly uh, uh, there was a certain intimacy I found with the cast and the crew and everybody was very protective of each other. And, uh, and that was great. It was, it was kind of the first series other than the kids uh, that I kind of felt like hard being part of and was excited about it. Yeah, was, I, wanted to, I want to talk about some of the episodes too. Um, Peter, I don't know if you have favorite Kelly ones, but I mean, you became the guy, like you would do, I mean, and this is again amazing and how much we fell in love with you so quickly from coming to the third season. From that point on, you did every season finale and every season opener. That's right. Yeah. That, which is a big deal and a lot of trust. Uh, but for me, if, of course, like for me, the, the last episode of season three, having to deal with getting gang raped <laughs> and, and going yeah. to rehab and all that stuff, you know, it's, for that, me, that's, that's where I... Shot. There's a shot in that episode of, of Scott go walking down the hall to check himself into rehab that is the most beautiful three to five shots of the whole series for me. I agree. I mean, that's, that's I mean, I, I had already really liked working with you, but that episode, for me personally, at least because it was so... Big episode, yeah. So, uh, I, we did some, you know, I remember that. I mean, that's one of the ones that I remember because it was it was powerful stuff, you know. And you were 
pretty raw. You're, you, you know, the performance was really great. And you, you really went for it. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, it was unnerving shooting, shooting some of that stuff. Do you, do you well, have was, a favorite moment or shot or scene, Kelly, from your, from your Queer as Folk days? I mean, there's, there's so many. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, that one was, I remember that when you uh, talked about that scene of Scott walking forward it, to go, I remember that one distinctly and thinking, oh yeah, it, it was a great melding of performance and story. And the music as well, that Beth Orton song. Well, that was a big part of the show, which was great as well. You know, the amount of music that we had, um, the amount of music we put into it was also really exciting part of it. I'm actually going to share a photo real quickly that I had just because I found this and I want to share it. That's, yeah, yeah. That. that was a that's ski lodge or something. Ski lodge. Yeah, that's Tate Taylor right behind that's her That's what I was going to say. Interesting trivia. You have three amazing directors here. Tate Taylor. Uh -huh. That's great. Directed the hours. No, no, not the help. Hours. The help, excuse me. <laughs> the help. <laughs> Kelly, Peter. Um, yeah, I still have that sweater. Do you? <laughs> God, I love how terrified you look at this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just shared that final final episode shot. <laughs> God. But yeah, and you uh, did the, ba the Babylon bombing as well. You did that whole- The bombing was, yeah, that was that was a great episode. Cindy Lauper. Rick Royally really beautifully done. Yes. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cindy Lauper was in that one, I remember. We, you know, Rosie O'Donnell, I remember working with her. Yes. It was- uh, And what about that in the last episode too? I remember that that in that final sex scene where you, you broadcast film or you played film oh, right. of them having sex over there. Tell me a little bit about that. Because that no. was- I mean, well, again, what was interesting, uh, I, I mean, obviously the, the sex scenes were uh, very progressive. And I mean, I think still even the stuff today, it seems to be pushing the limits then. Or they're not even a comparable the stuff that I've seen on, on cable and streaming. Um, and, but, so, I, I mean, I, I remember my first show, I, I had no idea how I was going to shoot these scenes or how to approach it. And, and we had those meetings, which again was, I guess, ahead of its time, you know, know every, we, everybody has them now. Everybody yeah. has them now. Um, and I remember going into that meeting and not really knowing, you know, where it was going to go <laughs> and just kind of listening and go, yeah, that would be good. Yeah, that would be good. Um, and then of course, by the third year, it was, you know, it was fairly commonplace to do those scenes. But it was uh, visually, it was interesting, again, how to visually handle those scenes that work emotionally and work for the story and for the characters where the characters are at. And so by the last episode, I just remember thinking, well, why don't we project the love scenes uh, that Gail had and Randy from the earlier episodes actually over them as kind of a culmination of what their story is. And uh, it worked pretty well. Uh, but I wanted to tell you one story because it's yes. funny. So in the club, we had Gail dancing at the last episode. And you know how we had always had those glitter cannons going? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I said, uh, he said, usually we have two or three cannons go for the, for the club scene. And I said, well, let's do like five times that. It's the last episode. Let's just go for it. <laughs> so we had Gail dancing. We, we shot off all these cannons. It went on forever. I just let it, you know, go and go and go. And the guy came up to me, the glitter cannon guy came up and said, that's, uh, that's the most glitter I've ever uh, <laughs> in my whole career, a culminating. <laughs> but, but the funny part is that I still have crew come to me and in that studio, 15 years later, they still find pieces of glitter. It's kind of the perfect uh, queer folk legacy. It is. Yes, it is. The glitter stays. But I think about you. I know we haven't talked in a long time. I think about you all the time. You, you had such an extraordinary impact on me as a director that, um, that I, A, I'm constantly hearing your words in my head when I'm directing. 
But also when people are shadowing me, I give them the advice you gave to me, which has taught, which I think honestly is the best advice I got about directing television from anyone ever. What was yeah. that advice? Which was a great episode of television has three to five great scenes and no bad ones. Yes. Well, I'm available, you know, Peter. <laughs> Copy that. Don't you, you, you will get a call. You'll get a call. I, in fact, one of the, I have a pilot now that they're talking about Vancouver for us. So, you know, yeah. get, get yourself ready. <laughs> That's the real reason I brought Peter on, just because I knew right. Kelly was looking for work opportunities and I thought <laughs> this would be a great pairing. Oh, how the worm has turned. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, I'd like to talk to you about a note you gave me in episode 406. <laughs> I completely get it. 